So, hey, Tammy, I wanted to record this video to talk about your book, Casey's Greatness Wings. You know, I'm a huge fan of your greatness sticks, and then I got the little plastic ones, which the kids love, and now you have the cards, and then the book. And I've recently used the book in sessions with my clients, and I love it. It's it's more than a book. It is so therapeutic. Well, I think books are therapeutic, you know, the bibliotherapy piece of it, but this is very interactive. So tell us about your book. Tell us about this, Casey's Greatness Wings. Yeah, so the book was really inspired by two passions of my trainings. One was the Nurtured Heart Approach. And you guys can find out more about the Nurtured Heart Approach if you go to the Children's Success Foundation and learn a little bit more. We won't go all into it now, but really inspired in terms of how are we honoring and celebrating kids' greatness. And then I took Dr. Janet Courtney's kinesthetic storytelling uh, class in her first play. And it's all in terms of the importance of touch. And touch is often taboo, right? And when we have negative touch, it's that cortisol that goes way up. And we have positive touch. We have that oxytocin, which is that love and joy hormone. And when we give touch mutually, right, it's the cortisol goes down and it's simultaneous within the person that the, that the oxytocin is, is going up together. And that's what's so beautiful, right? That attunement, that connection. So I took this inspiration of how are we cherishing kids' greatness as well as this attunement and doing the story on the child's back. So in the story, Casey is like a caterpillar who feels different from other people. And uh, then basically becomes inspired by this grandmother butterfly, which is my grandmother who's 96 years old and seeing all of the greatness. So every time there's a greatness word, we do a heart, right? And the heart is installed in the child's back. And it goes through so many different pieces of it. But some of the questions are, you know, what is your greatness? And as we're say, talking about it, how does a child relate to Casey and being able to find the greatness in themselves? So we do the kinesthetic storytelling and then so there's all different directions in terms of how to do it. And I have a videotape too, but it's really intuitive of when you're rubbing the child's back, of it just comes naturally, right? It's like Casey the caterpillar is, you know, walking through the tall green grass. So we're just walking up and being able to give that loving, appropriate touch. And another cool thing about it is Casey could be gender neutral. So you can decide if Casey wants to be a he or a she. And, and kids often will relate to it more. And you could ask the child, so is Casey you know, a boy or a girl or whatever you want Casey to be? So that's a nice piece of it. And then at the, in the back, we have all the greatness words. Oh. So then it's an activity book and the child can put all their greatness in the butterfly. Mm. And I often even like to ask, what are things that you see in yourself or your favorite things about mom and dad? And maybe then circle, what are something that you wish mom and dad was more of? Maybe you wish they were more playful. Maybe you wish they were more patient. And then we have the worry elephant because Casey is, just burdened by this heavy elephant. So through it, right, there's mindfulness of breathing and different activities of how Casey can let that heavy elephant get lighter and lighter, right, oh. through breath. So saying, I am calm, I am relaxed. So then we also have in here a whole section of explaining mindfulness to kids and different ways that that teachers or parents can teach mindfulness. So there's a lot in the book because it's really that connection piece. It's the mindfulness piece. It's the resiliency piece, right? So it's bringing all of that together. And once kids start doing this type of storytelling, they're like, wow, we could do it with every book. 
-hmm. And how beautiful is that, right? How beautiful is it for books are such a wonderful way to bond, just like play therapy. It offers that safe psychological distance from problems. And then we have that special touch. And we always ask permission, you know, is it okay to touch? Even for the parent when they're doing it with their child, is it okay for me to touch your back and that right away is teaching them that healthy touch and that boundaries and we'll also do this in the sand as a multi-sensory experience so the parent will do it on the child's back and then the child can do it in the sand or the child can do it with a piece of paper and draw the heart and draw their feelings so it's just that multi-sensory experience that the child is doing it or they're doing it on a stuffed animal so it's it's they have it they, they're moving their hands as well as the parent or caretaker doing it um on their back and it's just it's that full sensory experience and it's that mindfulness there's some cbt in it as well as most importantly like that attunement and that connection i mean jackie you and I are i mean how can we not be we know the importance of attachment and relationship and like regulating these little ones who are all over the place and just being there and that appropriate touch and getting them regulated and entering this safe calm place is just you know that's that's the work that that's that's what we strive for Mm -hmm. I know when I was doing it in the session, you could literally see the client just like, and the parent, just like, they just kind of melted into themselves. They were more relaxed, the adventure kind of went away, and it's so connected and so sweet. I love the idea of doing the heart, like on the stuffed animal or in, in the sand. I know um, with a lot of my clients I'm working with virtually, we have like a tray with rice in there so ah. and that, that could be bilateral too absolutely absolutely yeah i mean all, all of those 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 pieces that are really just coming together and can be just so grounding for them and and the book you know there's two different parts of the book and you can really just take little parts i mean jackie you said you've taken different parts of it and used it because there's there's different there's two different parts of it so i know people have used it in head starts for little ones and you just make it your own and being able to use just just how you need to do it and whatever works for the child or for the clinician or the parent Oh, I love it. Like you said, um, intuitive. And that's your grandmother making her? Whoa. That is my grandmother, who is my best friend and 96 years old. And she is my grandmother butterfly, who oh. is the world to me. And she, you know, she is responsible. I <laughs> say for all of my greatness, she is, she, I am very blessed uh, to still have her. And yes, I love oh, her. I feel so much. So the book is dedicated. And, and I talk about her a little bit in the beginning of the book and um, my, a little bit of my story and my relationship with her. And in the book, I talk about the nurtured heart approach as well um, to get a little bit more of that backstory since there's so much but I'm just like if I'm gonna write a book I'm gonna just do everything I love and there's a section just for teachers there's a section for clinicians and there's a section for parents so everybody has their own section to be able to hopefully get what they need out of it oh I love it so this is like uh, encapsulates you like all your passions like, you know, <laughs> art and touch and greatness this is all in there hey just real quick before we go um, the greatness cards I love them I love them. I can't even overstate that. Can you show them really quick what they sure. are? Sure. So Annie Wilkinson is the um, the the illustrator, and we took her with help from my dear friend Beth Ritchie, and so. Here are the greatness cards, and it's all you can see. It's all the same illustrations, well, and then we sure. have. And then we have all the different greatness words. And so we have on the back here. And so I will literally in session, will go through these and I will like call the child out, right? And giving them evidence of all the ways they're strong and, and being able to go through all of these qualities that I see in them. And in the nurtured heart approach, not only do we just say, oh, you're fun, you know, what are all the ways that you give evidence in showing that you're fun and all the evidence that all the ways that you are helpful. 
wonderful. Oh. And you know, it's wonderful to do with parents and I'll just show them all of these and I'm offering, I'm working on a downloadable one now. So all the greatness sticks can be done and you just could have it on your Zoom screen and the kids can sure. circle it and ways that, that we are coaching parents. I do it all the time in terms of that piece. Kids don't recognize all the greatness they have. I mean, you do the greatness six too and you know that and I say to them all the time, when you go through everything, right? And it's like every word, they have so much greatness. And I say, did you have any idea you had so much greatness? What do they say every time, Jackie? No, I, I literally just hours before this did that activity with a new client and it floors me. My sessions changed since I started doing that. And so, it, and not, yeah. And so what I tell parents when we do this activity, like kids will then like print it out and that they have it on their wall or we do greatness beads. I mean, greatness activities is for another day. But what I say is when we recognize these words, that it needs to be a part of the family vocabulary every single day. Nothing is one and done. And that this is now how you need to just start talking. And that's what Nurtured Heart calls like inner wealth. When we begin to start using these words on a regular basis, things begin to change and kids really believe it, right? What is the EMDR expression? Is it in your mind or do you believe it in your mind or in your heart, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So to believe it in their heart, That's we right. need to continue it on a regular basis. And it's not a one and done. It just needs to be part of their vocabulary, the family's vocabulary, clinician's vocabulary every day. So they can really truly feel it and know, know the authenticity of it. Oh, girl, you're going to give me chills. This is beautiful. <laughs> I think about you like did this in India, right? I did. I did. I did it in a women's group in India and their self-esteem was so low and it was just amazing when they came up with these words and then they all clapped for each other. And this was oh. something so different for them. And uh, yeah, I mean, to be able to use where groups for really anything. I mean, who doesn't need greatness? I mean, I could talk for hours of the stories of that. I have, you know, people who've sent me emails from all over the world and who would think that just words, whether they're on, I don't even have them all, but whether they're on sticks or cards or whatever you make them, they just, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the real deal. Like we need to just be using these, these words on more of a regular basis that we don't. Yeah, absolutely. I love using them on the first session because traditionally, um, the, you know, the first session would have been like, okay, did, let's kind of look at where we're going. And it's like, uh, 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 this, when you do these greatness sticks, it's like, you start off with this person sees my strengths. They know the me that I'm proud of, that I feel good about. And they may not even, you know, talk about that on a regular basis. And then we're coupling like the evidence and the memories that goes with it. It's, oh, it's yeah. good stuff. The energy is always focused on everything that's going wrong and how are we going to change them yeah. and stop having a temper tantrum and sleep through the night and yeah. be respectful. So when we're changing the lens, things really begin to make a difference. Kids want energy. You know, that's part of nurture and heart approach. Kids want energy no matter what. So why not give them the good juicy time in rather than, you know, energizing the negative, the negative stuff. Oh, so good. Timmy, you're amazing. I just love you. I love your work. I love your heart and your brilliance. And I love this book. Oh, <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so excited about this. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for having me and spending some time. It's great to see you. Oh, you're welcome. You take care. Okay, you too.